Here in the last few weeks, I've been getting a lot of requests from people wanting me to take a look at Open Mandriva. Now, I've looked at Open Mandriva many times in the past on camera, but it's been a couple of years since the last time I took a look at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab an ISO of their Rome edition. Rome is the rolling release version of Open Mandriva, and I'm going to use their flagship desktop, which is KDE Plasma. I've already grabbed the ISO and I've already installed it inside a virtual machine. I'm not going to record the installation process because it uses the Calamaris installer and it's a rather standard Calamaris installer experience there's nothing really customized about it you just click OK three or four times create a username and password and boom you're done so we're at the login manager here let me go ahead and enter my super secure password and I've got to say you know first impressions uh, when you first install this thing everything about it the uh, splash screen as far as the boot screen your login manager and then of course your desktop here with the wallpaper and your theming your KDE plasma theme and everything it looks really good it really looks kind of sharp and it looks like a professional well-made product so one of the most interesting features of open mandriva is their welcome application called OM welcome and this has several tabs at the top and within in each tab sometimes you have like sub tabs right so uh, the first tab of course is the welcome it's just a very brief welcome message to welcome to open mandriva then you have features and this is nice because it talks a little bit about uh, what is going on here on your open mandriva installation we get kernel information uh, kde plasma information as far as version numbers of all the software LibreOffice, our software repository selector i'm not sure what that is this is a tool to enable and disable repositories easily with just a few clicks we get information about our default web browser the default web browser is ungoogled chromium that's nice i did notice the uh, chromium browser down here but i guess it is the ungoogled version of chromium meaning they have ripped out the uh, the Google telemetry that's in it. So that is rather nice. We have the configure tab here, and this is where we can click on these uh, icons, and I'm sure it would open various like settings programs for doing things. For example, the system update. Now, I believe I've already updated the system. Uh, it may or may not find anything to update, but all it does is it opens the terminal and runs the various uh, whatever the DNF command to run the update there was nothing for it to do in this case you have some user and group stuff here you can configure your network you can clean packages uh, as far as removing some of the unused cruft that gets left behind on the file system cool stuff here and you've got several sub tabs here you also have settings for hardware uh, so it's like, kind of like your uh, settings monitor or uh, control panel you can think of for example display and monitor is here uh, audio and video drivers yada 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 we have software stuff here uh, DNF Drake is here let's go ahead and run that uh, select an icon theme for DNF Drake I like breeze dark and it was started in user mode to work correctly it should be started as super user continue anyway sure why not uh, I'm probably not gonna install anything anyway I just want to see the program open here if you guys are not familiar with this particular program it's just a, a front end so the package manager to DNF, it's a, a graphical front end. Uh, update notification is not active. Do you want to enable it from Drake tray? Normally I would say yes and have it sit in the sys tray, but since I'm not going to use it, I'm going to go ahead and decline that. And let's go ahead and close this out. Do I really want to exit? Yes. You have yum extender as well. Find additional applications. And we have a desktop tab uh, where we can change fonts and icons. We have a security tab where we can do things uh, like configure our firewall if you want to use a firewall and then you have password and keys then you have the applications tab well so this welcome application you can already see you got a ton of stuff we're nowhere near through everything but you've, you've got applications and it talks about various applications you can install graphics internet browsers all your popular browsers are here including several proprietary browsers you got a lot of your free and open source stuff like brave firefox and chromium but then you've got proprietary solutions like opera google chrome microsoft edge and vivaldi so you got a mixture of proprietary software in here as well then you've got multimedia uh codex and then your strawberry uh, audio player and you know handbrake for transcoding 
Lots of cool stuff here. Development, we got things like the Genie IDE. I love Genie. Utility, you know, um, FileZilla is an FTP program that I actually install on a lot of my systems. Of course, VirtualBox is great if you want to play around with virtual machines. Let's go into repositories. We've got main, extra, restricted, non-free, and then third-party repositories. And once again, please only use the software repository selector to enable or disable repositories. Well, how do I do that? Would clicking the icon actually open something? Let's see. Yeah, there it goes. And then open Mandriva software repository picker. And again, it's not something that I'm going to play with, but if you, for example, want some non-free software, probably is a good idea to en the, enable the non-free repository. Restricted, what is restricted contain? It contains packages that are free, but encumbered by patents. Yeah, I'd probably turn that on to extra contains packages that are free, but are not officially supported. You know what? I said I wasn't going to turn on all this, but I am. And the reason I'm going to turn this on is because I may try to install some software here in a minute. Let's go ahead and enable all the repositories that way. You know, I, I'll have better luck, hopefully, finding some of the packages that I want to install. And, of course, I have to give my sudo password to make those changes. And then, finally, we have a contribute tab here uh, for the OM Welcome application. And, you know, you got links to the forums and where to report bugs, where to give donations, uh, join the conversation. That's probably to, like, an IRC or a Discord or, or various chat rooms. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out the welcome application. Well, one thing I want to do, go back to the welcome screen here. If you don't want this to always auto launch every time you log in, tick on do not start OEM welcome on login, which is what I'm going to do now because I don't want this to always pop up every time I log in. And then I'm going to close the application. Now I can get the application to come back up anytime I want it by going in the menu system and I can go and search for OEM welcome. Actually, I can see it right here. Welcome. And that is the OM Welcome application. Let's go ahead and check out some of the software that is installed out of the box. So under games, we have K Patients, which is one of the KDE uh, card games. Uh, under graphics, don't have much here. We have our image viewer. So not a lot installed here, right? Under internet, we have Aggregator, which is a RSS newsfeed reader. We have Chromium, the web browser. Let's go ahead and see what version we're on. Remember, this is supposed to be rolling. Now, I don't know if it's rolling like Bleeding Edge, like Arch or Gentoo rolling, but we should have somewhat new packages on this. Uh, this is Chromium version 135.0.7049.95. I, I don't know if that's a recent version of Chromium or not. I don't have Chromium installed on any of my systems right now. Under internet, we also have KDE Connect uh, for syncing like to a mobile device. Kmail, I guess, is our email client if we wanted to use desktop email client. We also have the Telegram app installed as well. A bit of proprietary software as well. well. The app itself, I think, is free software, but of course the back end, the service is uh, proprietary. Under multimedia, it's interesting that you know, a rather minimal distribution that doesn't really have much installed, but they do install Caden Live, the video editor, out of the box. Most desktop computer users probably won't need a video editor. So again, interesting choice there. MPV for a media player is here. QM Play 2 is here. Let's see what this is. Uh, just a video player, it looks like. Yeah, this program uses Qt. I, I, I didn't want the about information for Qt. I want about QM Play 2. Let's see. Uh, does it really give us a description? Not really. A video and audio player and not much else. Hmm. All right. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever actually seen this multimedia player before. Also under multimedia, we have Voco Screen. I believe this is a uh, recording application like to record your desktop. So it, it's already picking up my uh, my audio, even in the VM. Uh, interesting little program. I don't think I've ever used this in the past, but I, I believe it's uh, like a screencast, uh, desktop recording kind of program. Getting back into the menu system, we have an office category. And well, so yeah, we're really light on most things as far as programs, but the office category is slap full. We have LibreOffice, Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer. So let's take a look at LibreOffice Impress. This is their presentation software. So uh, really neat little presentation software. I actually use this all the time. Uh, not all the time, but I use it quite often to make uh, slideshows for certain videos I do. 
I go to About LibreOffice. This is version 25.2.3. Dot one. Also under Office, we have a lot of the standard KDE stuff like their uh, K address book, contact with a K, K organizer, and Ocular is here as well. That's your PDF viewer in KDE. Let's see. This is Ocular 25.04.0. Under the system category, we have our crashed processes viewer. Let's see what that is. Huh, I don't know know what this is a uh, package kit ID uh, package kit D so there were some crashes so uh, I installed this yesterday before recording and uh, I did run an update of the system and there may have been something that crashed when I ran the system update well there must have been because I don't think anything has crashed so far while I was a uh, doing anything here on camera and I haven't tried to install software so I, I wouldn't think the crash would happen now but you know what let's go ahead and open a software center and see if uh, installing software actually works uh, now I did run the system update tool so I did do that today but where is the software center there is discover so that's KDE's discover software center now I will say that on many, if not most, Linux distributions, the uh, Discover Software Center, even if you install KDE Plasma, is usually not a great experience. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Uh, like if I install KDE Plasma on Arch Linux, you know, trying to use the Discover Software Center is not, it's just not a possibility. You, you're going to want to actually go to the command line and use Pac-Man in my case for Arch, but here on Open Mandriva, you know, we may just have to open a terminal and do everything with DNF, right? Because I don't know if we can actually install anything here. For example, VLC. I click on it. Uh, this will come from the Open Mandriva repos here. Uh, we do have the option to install it as a flat pack. The flat packs, I'm pretty certain, would work. Uh, but let's see if the repos actually work, because this is the trick you know, may or may not work. Update issue. There was an issue during the update or installation process. See technical details. Yeah, the package kit daemon, package kit D, which we already saw, was already, uh, has crashed at least twice on us. Just crashed a third time. So I guess, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Let's see if it would install as a flat pack. I would assume this would probably work, but I'm not certain. We haven't got a error message yet. But we also haven't got anything uh, downloading. Yeah. So I'm going to probably say Discover Software Center is not really the way you want to install software here. Well, let's just close that out. Let's just go to the terminal. Console with a K is our terminal here, which is usually the terminal on most KDE distributions. I did just get a notification if I moved my head. Uh, there was a pop-up here that did mention something about uh, VLC. So even though I canceled, it may have installed VLC as that flatback. But when I search for VLC, there's nothing here. Yeah, so I don't, I think it canceled it. So let's go ahead, while we're here, run a quick uname dash R. Let's get the kernel version, although we already saw it in the OM welcome application. We're on 6.14.2, but I wanted to see if it's a rather recent kernel. On my Arch distribution, I'm on a 6.15 kernel. I think I'm on 6.15.4. Now, because we're running KDE Plasma, I'm using Wayland as the default session. They do have ISOs that still have XORG on the system, and you could run Plasma on X11, but uh, just to verify that we're actually in Wayland, I'm going to go ahead and uh, oh, I was trying to do a tab complete, but I, I'm going to do xdg session uh, type is the variable. And if I echo that out, you can see Wayland was returned. If we were in x11, it would say x11. And the shell, nothing's going on fancy in the shell. I was hoping for some cool like fish shell type completion going on, but I'm pretty sure we're using bash here. But let's install fish. Let's actually try to use the standard package manager. So if I sudo dnf install fish, give it my super secure password, you can see all the uh, repositories that we enabled before were just synced. And now we can install the fish shell. Now if I switch over to fish, now we're in the fish shell. Let me clear the screen. Now flat packs are here as far as if I did a where is flat pack, 
you know, the flat pack package is installed, right? The package, uh, the binary user bin flat pack, but I don't believe it ships with anything already installed as a flat pack because a flat pack list returns nothing. So uh, VLC, which I thought about installing as a flat pack from the Discover Software Center, I canceled that and it does look like I successfully canceled that because it's not here either. Now for me, if I were to run a distribution like Open Mandriva, and because it's somewhat rolling, you know, it might be a, a distribution that would suit somebody like me, but I have to make sure certain things are available in the repos. For example, if I did a DNF uh, search Qtile, would I find Qtile in the repositories? Uh, let's see, Qtile Wayland, Qtile x86 yeah so i believe it is all here so i could install my favorite tiling window manager right now which is qtile now let me go ahead and exit out of the terminal actually that exited me out of the fish shell back into bash and now i exit out of bash and be completely out of the terminal one last thing i want to do the wallpaper the default wallpaper here I really like it. It's not bad for a simple kind of minimal wallpaper. I really do like it, but let's see if they have any other cool wallpapers that maybe I could take a look at. Obviously, we'll probably have like the default uh, KDE Plasma wallpaper pack, but we also have some nice photography here, such as that bridge, a nice little valley there, some architecture here. Yeah, some of these are all right. Yeah, I really like that. Well, that is a beautiful picture there. We've got a crab walking on the beach. A really nice light colored background that would work great against a dark theme. Uh, for example, changing the theme to breeze dark against that white background would really be a nice contrast. Now they've got some good stuff going on. A lot of open Mandriva uh, logos as far as uh, open Mandriva branded wallpapers as well. I guess from years past, Open Mandriva 2013. Yeah, I would say uh, over the years, the artwork has definitely gotten better on some of these wallpapers because we go forward six years. This is Open Mandriva 2019. Yeah, I really like these. Again, kind of minimal wallpapers, but they really, they really do look good. I think I'm going to go back to the default wallpaper if I can find it. I believe it's this one right here. Yeah, Open Mandriva 2024. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory look at Open Mandriva Rome, which is their rolling release edition. And of course, that was the KDE Plasma edition as well, which I believe is their flagship desktop. That's why I went with that. But there were ISOs I could have downloaded for GNOME, XFCE and I believe LXQ as well. Overall, a really impressive Linux distribution that's been around for a long time and seems to be gaining in popularity here in recent weeks. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt Steve, 40 millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darlof Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arch, Invador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Words into an Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Open Mandriva would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.